All right, we're almost there. Uh, we are in the uh, final stages of this chapter on activity-based costing, and we are looking at a section on customer profitability analysis. Now, normally, if you're familiar with the channel, we don't we don't integrate a lot of PowerPoint slides and that and those types of things. We just have a handout and we work through it uh, on paper. Um, but cu customer profitability analysis is a little bit different. Uh, it doesn't exactly move in the same way that a traditional accounting does. This is more of a, a management need that an accounting professional might uh, break out the, the various components that, that, that they need to assess uh, customer profitability. So I wanted to go over a couple of slides and then I wanted to get into an example after that. <clears throat> So we've got a, a uh, business here. Uh, let's see, do we have any information on this business? I guess we do. It's a building supply company, and they have identified one, two, three, four, five different types of activities, the related cost drivers, and they have also calculated a rate for these things. So notice that visits to customers, $400 pop. That's pretty significant. And then some of these are uh, specific to a building uh, supply industry or not, customer invoices and, and um, those types of things, customer orders. These are going to exist in just about any type of, uh, of business. So they're uh, wanting to analyze um, a particular customer, and this particular customer uh, we only have an example of one. This, this part up here is what we saw in the previous slide, but, but this area down here for customer activity costs for uh, Haskell Construction uh, is the customer. Uh, we, they had to go on, uh, looks like, four visits to the customer, um, and then they incurred. This is the number of times they did each of these things. And what they're doing is really not that important, uh, but you can see they multiplied the cost out here. So why do we analyze customer profitability? You know, it's very important to understand if we're if we're if we have excess capacity to do any and all jobs that come our way. Maybe we need to we'll take on any job that can produce a profit. But however, if we're operating close to capacity already, we have to consider the profitability of, of uh, what a customer is going to bring. And sometimes we even will look at existing uh, customers. And maybe we have some customers that uh, require a few too many in-person visits, if you catch my drift. That really drives our costs up and it, and it decreases the amount of profit that we're going to make on that client. So... When we do customer profitability analysis, it's a little different than what we're used to. We've got customer sales to this Haskell construction of $79,000. we have got cost of goods sold. And very important, we've got gross profit on sales. So gross profit or gross margin, whatever you like, is merely our sales revenue minus cost of goods sold. Now, this is done on a per customer basis, however. Okay. So... We have these activity costs. This $3,030 came from right here. That's just the sum of all these figures here. And what they have done in this slide is they showed us that they have a customer, this particular customer has a customer profitability ratio of 17.7%. So 13970 which is gross profit minus the support uh, type costs that, that are specific to this customer gives us 13,970. Divide that over 79,000, we come up with 17.7%. As long as we do this the same way for each customer, it doesn't matter, it's perfectly fine. Uh, so, you know, if Haskell, if, if most of our customers have a percentage of 15, 16%, well, then Haskell's construction is a pretty good customer. If However, if most of our customers are at 20, 22%, well, then Haskell might be on the chopping block if we, uh, uh, if we, if we run into a capacity type issue. So I just kind of wanted to show you that because 
we're going to have to keep kind of keep these slides in mind when we get to our question here. And so uh, this is actually a uh, multiple choice question here. And so what we always want to do, and what do I do? I'm going to put my pencil. Let's see here. Let me find my. All right, got it. Uh, profitability for each builder after taking into account the support activity required for each builder is. Okay. All right. So kind of related question. Looks like we're dealing with building, uh, builders, construction, uh, either way. But this is a very, very long uh, question. Okay. So it gives us some background information up here. Uh, perfect painting services. They provide residential painting services for three home building companies. So I don't know if you know anything about building companies or not, but what it looks like is perfect painting services is a subcontractor. They do painting work and building companies hire them to come in and paint the house or building uh, after they, it has been constructed. Those three general contractors or building companies are Glen Oaks, Streamwood, and Buckington. Okay. And um, so these support functions are items that are costs that generally occur after uh, all regular costs, uh, after the job is done. We've, we've got our cert a, a certain amount of revenue. Um, and then we have some cost of goods sold potentially associated with that revenue. But then we may have to go back and to stay in good with, our, with these uh, general contractors. If there's any kind of a problem with our work, we have to go back in and fix it, support uh, type costs. So it says that it uses a job costing system for determining the cost for completing each job. Uh, that makes perfect sense. So you've been exposed to job order costing already. Uh, the job cost uh, system does not capture any cost in by perfect or return touch-ups and refinishes after the homeowner occupies the home. So again, this is after we have billed for our job. Okay, so um, that's 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 important. <clears throat> Uh, it says here, each year the company generates about one-third of its total revenues and gross profits from each of the three builders. Okay, that's important information. They've done a lot of this work for us here. And so Perfect Painting Services has identified three post-job activities that are incurring costs. And those are major refinishes to a work that they've done touch-ups so you know a little bit a little bit less work uh, but maybe uh, more cost uh, per trip uh, and then communication so this could be phone email whatever time is money what drives the cost of these support activities well hours on the job number of visits for touch-ups because if a touch-up it probably takes us longer to get there and get back than it does actual time spent. So <clears throat> the more appropriate cost driver <clears throat> is number of visits. And then communication, number of calls, emails, these types of things. And then they have determined, they don't give us, you know, anything other than what they have calculated here, just like they did in the PowerPoint, $40, uh, per hour on the job for major refinishes, $60 per visit for touch-ups, and then $12 per call uh, for communication support activity. All right, and then it's got our three builders listed right here, and then the number of refinishes, touch-ups, and communication for each of these uh, general contractors. Okay, so this is a lot of information. It says, assume that each of the three customers produces gross profit of $50,000. Okay, so if we were to go back to our slide, um, that $50,000 would be the equivalent of this $17,000 right here. And then we just subtracted out the support functions from that to get our numerator 
in our gross profitability ratio that we calculated. Okay, so uh, notice our gross profit is the same for each builder. That's a we've got three customer or we've got three builders or customers that we have to deal with, um, but they all produce conveniently the exact same amount of gross profit. Okay, so that's nice. So how do we uh, calculate this? Well, uh, this is a multiple choice question. So I notice immediately, I notice immediately that, um, so we're going to do this a couple of ways. Um, we're going to take a shortcut. I noticed that in my answer choices, they threw me a little bit of help here. And that is, is that the, for the first company, Glen Oaks, all of the figures are different. Okay. So if I can figure out correctly, if I can figure out correctly uh, the profitability for this Glen Oaks company, then I've got my answer. Okay. And then I'll speak to that uh, a little bit more in a moment. Uh, but again, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, how much of these, how many, uh, how much of the support type uh, activity costs are we incurring? For each of these three builders, all right. So Glen Oaks incurred seventy major refinishes, and they did that at a cost of forty dollars each. They uh, also incurred one hundred and twenty-five touch-ups at a cost of. $60 each, and they incurred 39 phone calls at a cost of $12 each. Okay, so let's bring this calculator over here. 40 times 70 is probably going to be 2800 and it is. So, let's see here, I'm going to write this in red so we can kind of differentiate a little bit better. That's supposed to say 2800. Okay. And then we've got 60 times 125. $60 rate times 125 touch-ups. Okay, that's 7500 bucks. Trust me, it says 7500. And then we've got 39 phone calls times $12 a phone call is $468. All right. So we're going to go through and add up everything in red. I'm going to go backwards because I've already got 468 on the calculator. I'm going to add to that this 7500, 7500. And I'm going to add to that 2800. Okay. So my total supporting costs for the Glen Oaks builder is 10,768. That 10,768 is equivalent to this 3,030 right here. So we would say that in total, we have $10,768 in costs. Okay. And gross profit is fifty thousand. We're going to subtract out this ten thousand seven sixty eight, and that gives us thirty nine two thirty two. And notice that that's one of the answers. So we know immediately because all of the other B, C, and D are, are different figures. Assuming that we did this right, and we did. <clears throat> that that's our answer and we can get away with that on a multiple choice question. Now, can we, do we have to do all of this stuff for Streamwood and, and uh, Buckington? No, we do not because we're confident in our answer choice A here. But again, if this was an online homework and you had a customer profitability question, well, then you would have to do all of this because you're probably going to have to fill in each little box. You know, you're going to have to fig fill in this 2800, 7500, 468. You're probably going to have to total it and then get this figure as well. So this could be in a, in a 
in an online homework question, this could have something like 15 different blanks that you have to fill in. But for our purposes and in the interest of time, uh, I'm only going to do the uh, Glen Oaks. Uh, you can fall, you can do Streamwood and Buckington on your own. And then what you should find is that the profit for Streamwood is 36,450. Um, and customer profitability for Buckington is 24.9. So which one of these customers is the least valuable? Buckington. Because we also we had gross profit of 50,000 for everybody. Who's the most profitable? Glen Oaks. They have the highest profitability. Now we can't do a profitability analysis uh, ratio like we did in the PowerPoint because we don't have, they did not provide to us revenues. Now we could still do it. Um, I just don't know what point there is. We could come up with a percent. We could, instead of using uh, revenues, we could actually use gross profit. Now this is going to produce much higher percentages, but if we did that consistently for all customers, well then that would, that would work as well. All right, well, thank you for watching. That's it for this video and this uh, reminder. There are other uh, videos that I have for activity-based costing that are for uh, other uh, textbooks, and I do encourage you to uh, look those up.